issuance of Stock Basics Problem 2. Barry Inc. had the following transactions in its first year of operations. Issued 37,000 shares of common stock. Stock has a par value of $1 per share and was issued at $20 per share. Earned net income of $77,000. Paid no dividends. At the end of the first year, what is the total amount of paid in capital? So this question is focusing on paid in capital, the total amount of paid in capital. Now, this is not the same thing as an excess of uh, par. It's just paid in capital. So it's really important that you focus on what the question is asking. Remember the balance sheet, assets equals liability plus stockholders equity, and stockholders equity is broken into two parts, paid in capital and retained earnings. And remember, we have our friendly acronym, that's right, WIRE, W-I-R-E. Withdrawals, investments, revenue, expenses. Withdrawals for corporations are dividends, and they reduce stockholders' equity. Then we've got I for investments, which is where the paid-in capital comes into play. Then you have the R and the E, which is the revenue expenses. The I, the investments, when a corporation issues stock, whether it's common or preferred, when it raises money through issuance of stock by getting new owners or or, or sending stock to the existing owners, that's going through the paid in capital section. This question is just asking, what is the total amount in paid in capital? So just want to know, what's the total amount here? Now we go through everything. Remember that retained earnings has everything else. So it has the W, which is the dividends, the R, which is revenue, and the E for expenses and wire. We're focusing on the I, the, which again goes to paid in capital. Let's work our way from the bottom up. Paid no dividends. So we're focusing on the information. We're in our first year operations. We're looking at this information. Paid no dividends. Does that affect the paid in capital side? No. So that's we can ignore that. What about earned net income? That would go to retained earnings, so we can ignore that. The next one, though, issued 37,000 shares of common stock. Stock has a par value of $1 per share and was issued at $20 per share. That is relevant. That is relevant. Now, let's just take a step back. Many of you know that because we have a par value on the balance sheet, on the statement or on the stockholders equity portion of the balance sheet or the statement of changes in stockholders equity, under common stock, because this is common stock, the common stock account would be the par value, the 37,000 shares times $1, right? We have 37,000 shares times $1. And you're exactly right. The additional, I'm sorry, the amount in excess, which would be 20 minus one, the $20 market value or the issuance price, I should say, the issued price of $20 minus $1 for the par is 19, $19 per share times 37,000 shares. That's the in excess of par for common stock. This question is not asking about the in excess. It's just asking for the total paid in capital amount. So all we have to do, this is really simple. All you have to do is just take 37,000 shares the number given, multiply that by the total price per share issued at, which is $20 per share, and we're going to get $740,000, and that is our answer. That is the total amount of paid in capital. Again, please make sure you go through this. $740,000 is the correct answer. It is not the excess. It is not $19 times 37,000 shares. That would be if I'm asking you for what is the total amount of paid in capital in excess of par for common stock? That would be what it's asking. This is paid in capital. So remember, paid in capital, we can break up into the uh, actual stock portion, common stock, preferred stock, which is going to be the par amount or the no par. Um, we have to calculate the stated value, those, or look at the stated value. And then the in excess is the difference. But the total in paid in capital, we add the two numbers together.